My name is Cynthia Jures. For those of you who I don't know, I'm the um, <clears throat> director of the Earth Treasure Vase Global Healing Project and the guiding teacher for the International Gaia Mandala Sangha and the founder of Alliance for the Earth. And we have been meeting like this and originally in person for more than 30 years, every single full moon to cultivate this practice of bringing healing and protection to the earth. And as many of you know, maybe most of you know, um, it began when I met a 106 year old Lama living in a cave in Nepal back in 1990. And um, I received from him this practice of the earth treasure vases which is what we have used as the focus for our meditation for all this time, filling these little clay pots with prayers and offerings and taking them around the planet to, to plant them in now close to 70 locations around the world um, to create this global healing mandala. So, um, Tonight is a very special night for me, and um, I'm just deeply, deeply moved because we have the honor of welcoming Joanna Macy to our circle. And Joanna has been um, just a dear friend and mentor to me since the early 1980s. Um, so I have known her for longer than this journey has been going on. She has been an inspiration to me and a guide and a support to me all along the way. And so for those of you who may not know Joanna, she is known as an eco-philosopher, which I think is a pretty wonderful uh, way of <laughs> characterizing what, what you do, Joanna. Um, she's the founder of the work that reconnects, the author of um, many, many books, including World as Lover, World as Self, um, Active Hope, and so many more. Um, so when I first met Joanna, she was doing what she called um, despair and empowerment in the nuclear age, really going into uh, and inviting people to come to terms with the reality that we're living in uh, in these times. So already back then in the 80s, she was teaching us um, how to wake up in relationship to what we're doing to Mother Earth. And uh, the other thing that Joanna was uh, teaching very early on and, and looking into that was a, a strong um, uh, influence on me uh, was this notion of um, nuclear guardianship and uh, really asking us to um, consider what are what are we leaving to future generations and how can we guard these um, substances that are changing the web of life uh, forever. Um, and so it was actually around the same time that Joanna was uh, bringing this out that I went to meet Charak Rinpoche, the old wise man in the cave. And I was very much motivated to ask him, um, what can we do to bring healing and protection to the earth uh, because of this awakening that I was going through, through um, Joanna's work uh, in regard to the legacy of radioactive waste. So um, it, it, you can see this is a deep weaving here. And Joanna's teachings have, have really inspired me and, and shown me the way in, in, in the same way that uh, the Dharma has. I consider Joanna to be a great Dharma teacher for these times. And um, so, Joanna had, uh, has gone on, of course, to um, bring so many pieces together in what she calls the work that reconnects, which is um, a, a body of, of work that is really pointing the way for um, 
waking up in these times and, and doing so together. So I really want to honor you, Joanna, for all that you've done in the course of your amazing lifetime. And what a gift it is to um, be able to share the path with you, to have been on the receiving end of, of so much of what you have brought forward in your life. And I just want to express my gratitude uh, for all you have given me and and through me to this um, global Sangha, who is dedicated. These are, these are my family, <laughs> all of these people here, uh, coming from all over the world, many through pilgrimages to locations where we have taken the treasure vases over the years. And we are now um, this Sangha or family of, 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 of people dedicated to listening to Gaia's call and waking up in these times. So um, such a great gift to be able to bring, bring all of us together right now. So I know that um, you probably have things you'd like to say, Joanna. I thought we could start with, with this um, sort of recognition that in the beginning, I know that you were a little unsure about the earth treasure vase practice that you you know had some questions about it's you know what was it really able to do but i think it's kind of shifted over time and um i'm curious <clears throat> what that shift how you would characterize that shift and what is your feeling about this particular practice um today and how it's evolved yes i could say that the shift would could be characterized as seeing that uh, the uh, healing, which uh, looked as if it could be some uh, magical connection between the wishes in the treasure vase itself, the act of, uh, and the uh, events on the outside and you know that sort of you could sort of scratch your head a little bit as to the uh, actual uh, logic of this and though there was something at the same time that it of what a sense of what this would require in terms of uh, devotion and devotion to the earth and what uh, that could uh, release in oneself the, in the process of uh, actually following the guidance and the instructions. And then as time went on, I could see that this um, putting oneself into uh, an oh, into service like this linked to an age old uh, body of spiritual commitment that there were were dimensions of it that uh, couldn't be uh, dismissed and that uh, in the process were being there was something asked for you were asked to act and do something that's both very material you have these vases and then you have the filling of them you have the placement of them and so the, a, a, a coming together of these uh, elements to which you were asked to act in uh, obedience and and in service that did a remarkable unleash something remarkable in the psyche, in the uh, depths of one's being, 
that you suddenly found that you could not suddenly but gradually find that you were taking this situation we're in with utmost seriousness and that you were asked to take yourself seriously and you were asked to really know that the uh, earth was under threat and I'm saying this today having heard uh, in this morning's news that this very week uh, the uh, Congress of the United States has uh, whatever the things that they don't want to do for the families and the children and the health and the of just the people in this days but what they will do is not only do any anything the Pentagon asks but uh, a large thousands and uh, well excuse me billions more that even that the, the Pentagon doesn't know what to do with so that there's this uh, magical process at work in our government to think that whatever uh, needs to be done the most needed at all, at all is to uh, shore ourselves up with the uh, nuclear defensiveness that is a readiness to build the most contaminating dangerous objects in the world and in the history of humankind mm -hmm. and that seems of a quality of folly that is so uh, mindless <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, dangerous mm -hmm. that uh, the steady work at putting the mind to putting objects of what are the most sacred and serious to the mind into these pots for in the body of earth makes ever more sense more sense <laughs> <laughs> and the uh, beauty of this the moral beauty and the psychic spiritual training involved in this uh, and the uh, the way the heart heats up as you think about it um, builds more and more awe in me Mm. for the the uh how about this exquisite mm. process mm -mm -mm. Yeah. and the, mm -hmm. these are beyond beyond an info expression the folly and danger of playing with this uh, poisonous nuclear process that we're filling the world with and that makes the journey that you are on and that you've shared with so many people and their response to it is uh, exquisite mm -hmm. I'm so glad to uh, see it continue and to the uh, moral discipline and beauty that is involved here mm, thank you joanna it, it, it's quite a time we're living in and that impulse around addressing the the nuclear issue which was one of my great motivations to begin with has never really left um, but there are so many things now not just that which of course is one of the most serious issues that we face um but but now you know all the things that we could name from climate change to um you know <laughs> everything else i won't name um you I, I interviewed you one time and you talked about becoming vessels of the holy we were talking about these vessels 
And then I think it was actually you who was the very first person to point out how each of us, this was a long time ago, we, we had this conversation, each of us is a holy vessel. And, and so it's one thing to, to take this, this treasure vase or vase around carrying these prayers and these commitments that we, we feel, and many, many of you on the call have either stewarded treasure vases or are stewarding one now. And you see the seriousness of this and the, the assignment that we are holding in our lives in these times. Um, so, but what does it mean to you, Joanna, you know, to, to be a, a holy vessel now, you know, living as we are facing into the, the great question of, of the great turning, you know, are we, uh, is this just a stopgap measure? How do we, how do we embody this um, assignment for ourselves as vessels? Well, I think it's uh, through that four-letter word mm. um, to love uh, mm. this earth, uh, this earth that we have the incredible good fortune to be born here. Every molecule, every atom in our body is from this earth, of this earth. We are the earth. Uh, and that we are, it's our incredible good fortune. I, it's how I experience it, to be alive now when she's under such threat and such danger. Uh, and the, all the other beings in it, uh, the, and the uh, beings of the waters and of the forests, of the rivers, of the plains, uh, the toxins that are spreading and the species that are dying out and the uh, soil that's wearing away, you know, that, that is, it's a very harsh, harsh, unforgiving time. And we are the, but for me, I just feel so glad to be here at a time when it just, it, it looks so dark and that we get a chance. We don't say, oh, you know, uh, how could we, uh, if you hear that and would know that this was going to happen at Earth, you would certainly want to be there. That's the way I feel. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that we are, and it's a great, great privilege. And it's a time when we can feel our love right there, or feel it right there in our heart mind. Mm -hmm. And that uh, we are like a chance to give our heart minds to this love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm to be all that we can for paying attention, being of service. And as, and then with the, with the, the vest, these treasure vases that you have a chance to actually uh, put, put your love into actual physical form. It's body into the body of earth. You planted a vase at the tritium facility right. in connection to UC Berkeley. Yeah. What was it like for you to actually bury that vase, plant that seed? Yeah. Well, this was, oh, well, you know, that the on the grounds of the university and the University of California was where plutonium was discovered and made, you know, and it was, has had a huge role to play in, in the uh, development of nuclear weapons. And uh, so that to, to do it right here, we had to sneak around 
It was on a s steep slope. Uh, we were had to wanted to be uh, undiscovered, needless to say, and to and not to go rolling down the hill. And uh, it was if if you come to the uh, Berkeley camp a campus of the of the University of California. There, there's you'll see up above on the hill there is a um, a kind of house of um, a kind of museum a kind of house of learning and it's it has its name will come to me the hall of science the Lawrence hall yeah uh, and so it's off to uh, a, a a place that's um, marked uh, hidden you know and yeah it's nice to think it would be there yeah it's, yeah and yeah. The, uh, yeah I think that you told me after that vase was planted that and you were concerned about all the children who go there um, because it's a place that does process plutonium and other things and so it's really a dangerous situation, but that they they may have shut that down now. Is that right? No, the Hall of Science, no. No, but the production of the tritium. Oh, that's true. The yeah. tr tritium facility. Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. we don't know what the effects of these treasure vases will be. We just pour our love into them and make our offerings from our hearts and call on something so much larger than ourselves to to you know do the work that we little humans struggle with so much but we care so much i mean this is the thing that has come back around to me over and over again as i've carried out this practice how everyone cares about this world and about the earth and about our communities and about the trees and the rivers and the, you know, all of it, the web of life. Yeah. So, um, and we've been, we are now being so mindless with yeah. what we're doing. It's just, uh, it becomes uh, questions of just, yeah. Right, it, it, it's, it feels like uh, empty-minded and we can be vessels that are filled with love mm. for, and, and a sense of responsibility, a sense of deep caring, mm -hmm. deep caring for the wholeness of this earth and for the wholeness of the, the people that these, uh, nuclear bombs that tear us apart that tear flesh and bone that tear us into and turn us into uh these irradiating shattered clouds of flesh that is just uh and to and to have that balanced by something that you're making with your love to balance that with these yeah well joanna um my friend david nickel who happens to be on this call um he wrote something recently about this time and i wanted to read this because i think well let me just read it to you he says this this full moon actually that we're in the midst of right now um from a point of view of astrology is a crucial initiatory passage into courage. Oh, great. Okay. That humanity is being challenged for real to step into the courage that it will take to choose a path aligned with love rather than fear. And each of us is being uh, challenged to step into that courage more fully on a personal level um, he says courage is the price of entrance to spiritual adulthood 
and it can only be realized through facing our deepest fears. So can we do this? How can we find the courage, Joanna, to activate this kind of like evolutionary leap that we're in the middle of, or maybe it's a little step-by-step -step process, I don't know, but it does feel like we're in a evolutionary time um, when our collective awakening is, is uh, being activated. And, 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 and so to find the courage to face into that and to find our, our collective intelligence to meet this moment, how would you respond to that, Joanna? And thinking that there is so much that is way that we are just on the brink of knowing and being ready to experience, share it with others, that there is an understanding of our uh, the systems that we are part of, the uh, actual ways that we can find in ourselves the uh, coming into a deeper experience of who we are, that we are the earth. This is ever since uh, I'd say the middle of the 20th century, there have been turnings of uh, wisdom openings to our mutual belonging, uh, both in science and in uh, new forms of uh, spirituality and courage that we have been manifesting, that we have in our work for justice, just in the last decade, just in the last years, that there are, and what young people are stepping into and wanting to bring, make real for our world and what they're willing to face. It is uh, gorgeous. So I think that there's, uh, where it's, it's the evolutionary leap that we can make now as we dare to give legs to our love for each other for all species mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. our world mm -hmm. i feel it very uh in, in in the activists coming out of every religion right now you know it's most mostly i see it very keenly with the brother sister in the dharma that i know but that there is a, a readiness to uh, put away these the folly of playing with death, mm -mm. threatening each other with death, and to pull each other into the blazing sunlight of who we can be and what we can make of this beautiful planet. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Mm. Give legs to our love. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know that you you said uh, in a call we had the other day that you have been feeling like you're you're sensing um, all the bodhisattvas, you know, lining up. <laughs> yes, to come in and 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 give legs to our love, you know, to to um, participate in this time. Yeah, people who don't want to miss it. So I'm imagining that on the Buddha fields throughout the cosmos, throughout the universe, <laughs> they say, oh, have you heard what's happening on Earth? That, you know, that little third planet out on that medium, so way over there on that wing of the Milky Way. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm wanna, I want a chance to get born there right now because th this is a chance to really go for broke, to really see what it, what love can manifest. Mm, 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 mm. Really know how uh, ready your heart mind can be 
to face and turn it into a joyful adventure. Because mm. it's scary to be on Earth now. It okay. is. It takes courage to face into what's happening because it looks so dire. Yeah. But how else are you going to live here? With your head in a bag? I mean, <laughs> but look at it and say, this is a great moment for uh, humanity to wake up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look at look at more and more. Just be on the lookout for people who are waking up, and see and look at, and see that in the mirror as well. Mm -hmm. Joanna, do you think that there's a difference in the process of awakening, as we have talked about it in the Buddha Dharma? Uh, for such a long 25, 2600 years, that the that the process now is different because it is a collective experience and we are asked to come into this experience together. I do definitely. I think that the there are a lot of signs that uh it's actually as people have been saying the next Buddha is a Sangha. It's going to be a shared collective experience uh, because it isn't working for us to try to uh, run things and direct the processes by staying separated uh, in the with all our thinking between our ears in this <laughs> uh, but uh, we are beginning more and more I bet each one of you who is in this conversation is recognizing the instance after instance where somebody else is finishing your sentence someone else steps in at just the right moment and you're finding as you listen to each other as you speak to each other something you're feeling uh, coming home but coming home to not a smart little uh, uh, joanna or cynthia but coming home to a beautiful identity that is larger than mm. uh, your real self is much bigger than your spag of skin mm. however lovely it might feel to you but it's you're bigger than that it's it's you're as big as this it's feeling as big as this planet at times and it can be a whole lot bigger yeah, yeah. and we're right here we're alive at this time when this has to happen for life to go on. That's what I'm so excited about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a miracle, isn't it? Yeah, but you know, our journey through the years and through the centuries is strewn with miracles. Yeah. Just how we came about and it's in us, you know, I think of the magic of uh, how it was for us, we, how much we know in, in our mother's womb, we went through all the little forms of life. We, we had uh, tails and uh, gills and we were the, we did the whole progression of life. We know that our bodies know that, and we want we want to continue it. We want to continue it because we're on the way of having a mind that can understand and dance with the cosmos. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How does it feel to be? That, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Well, and that's the, that was in you, that readiness was in you when you listened with um, a shock and maybe some consternation to what the uh, Lama was saying in the, in the cave. What? A vase? Me? <laughs> All over? <laughs> Who, me? No. <laughs> exactly. 
Yeah. But that's what what miracles are made of, and that's what evolutionary leaps are made of. Well, it does feel to me like this practice has facilitated some real evolutionary leaps, to be quite honest. I, it, it, it has been so surprising and so deep. And I think everyone who is here, well, maybe not everyone, but many of you could um, kind of like testify, you know, that what we're doing here is part of a larger um, calling. Maybe we could say it's Gaia's calling, you know, to give us a little pot that we can pour our love and our hearts and our um, caring into and, and take it to places we love and care about. And then watch what happens because things do happen that we oh. could never have predicted. I love that. I love the reading about that in, in what you've written, dear Cynthia. Yeah. Oh, people that you'd expect to just scratch their head and say, you want to do what with a what, you know, <laughs> me? But know that there's a, a, a readiness mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as if that they, there was some story that they had heard once in a dream, how a planet comes alive, how a planet knows itself. Yeah. That's us. And how we know ourselves to be part of Gaia. Yeah. How yeah. we wake up to that. Yeah. No. Oh. I could carry on here uh, for a lot longer. It's such a gift to be able to talk with you, Joanna, and to uh, to share this conversation with everyone here. Yeah, but before you stop, I just want to say, uh, I want to bow to the young woman who had, was, had sought out the, the yogi and the, the, the llama in the cave and that, uh, and baffled as she must have been, she wanted, was, thinking surely he has something else to suggest than pots. <laughs> and that, and that you gave it, you opened to what he was saying. You didn't run. You didn't say, oh no, I'll, I'll, I'll ask some of my friends, okay, I'll write an article about it or I'll, but you, allowed yourself to be recruited, you stepped into more courage, courage even to follow his guidance, and then you stepped into that. So you show that it can be done, that you can uh, give your life to something. And for that, uh, there are no words that, that can express uh, the, the beauty of that and, and what it's, how we need that at this tired, baffled, poisoned, fragile old world that seems to be falling apart. Yeah, yeah. Then we find this, uh, we find a, a, a fountain in our own hearts. We find a f fountain that we didn't know was there. It was a fountain of, of, of love, of belief. And it makes the world look very young. Mm. And we become very young. And we open to an adventure that is the kind of adventure that could just save the world. Mm. <laughs>
you make making me cry <laughs> i hope i hope that i mean my my prayer as we now go into the meditation tonight is that everyone here and those who are listening later and those who are yet to come you know may find each of us find that thing that is calling us you know that we can offer that is only ours and is contributing because of that to the restoration of our world the, the engagement with the creative life force of Gaia, of Mother Earth, who of which we are such an integral part. And this is this is all there is. I mean <laughs> And what's so great is that is that everybody who takes part in this, uh and we hear about and take part in there saying, Oh okay, well sure. Uh that this uh, spreads. Yeah. All you need to do is try. Yeah. All you need to do is ask. That was what, and you were willing to do that. I don't know if I would have found the uh, immediate, that readiness, but you did. Well, I, I found it, uh, it took me a while to accept the assignment, you know, and, and then it was with the help of you and others, so many others along the way. And I know one, uh, uh, one other very important person is also on this call and that's Wendy Johnson. Wendy was there at the very beginning and was such a uh, sister in the path on the path in those early days. And there have been so, 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 so many of, of you. All, it's been 30 years that we have been carrying this out, more than that. And now we have, you know, we had this first generation of treasure vases that I was hell bent to take around the world. And then suddenly there was a second generation that <laughs> needed to be uh, taken around. And now those are being uh, stewarded by many of you and and then recently we crafted this third generation of treasure vases with Mary and Naranjo here in the native lands of the Tewa people in northern New Mexico and <clears throat> the vases are going out in yet another way through new stewards and you know so it it has a life of its own now it really does and yes it does I'm uh, I'm just so grateful, Joanna, for for the the call that you answered in bringing forward the work that reconnects and all that you have done to um, inspire so many of us to uh, meet this moment with everything we've got, knowing yeah. that we we are vessels of the holy. Because it's really more fun to be glad you're here <laughs> on earth to be grateful to be alive just now yeah 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 